Hello, welcome to another Snap Reports class. In this channel, I teach you ways of automating your work in Excel so that you can update it in a snap of a fingers. Okay, so in today's video, we are going to do an update on a video that I published recently where I talked about connecting to an Excel file with Power Query to bring in data from one of the sheets or several sheets. Let me show you what I'm talking about and then I will tell you the update I need to do to what I told you in that video because the strategy that I used may not be enough to solve all the challenges with that data importation. I received an email from Alex from Sydney, Australia, alerting me about that and that's what I want to share with you today. Okay, so let's imagine in this folder I have an Excel file, let's call it data, and in that Excel file we are going to put some information in one small range just for testing purposes. Okay, let's pretend this is our data that we want to import from another file and notice that this data is in a sheet, we are not defining a table or a named range. When we don't have any of those, then Power Query needs to guess the area where the data is. And it's not really guessing. Power Query is using the information under the XML code of an Excel file to find all the range that is used, it's looking for the last cell in that sheet with some type of data or information and will consider all the information that goes up to that last cell in the sheet. In this case, as we saw, I didn't type anything outside this range. So Power Query will understand that the only used range in this sheet is this area here. Let's confirm that. Let me save the file if I haven't yet. And let's st uh, start a second file. Uh, let's call it maybe import. And from that file, let's imagine that we want to connect to the first one and bring data from this sheet with Power Query. So we go to data, get data from file, from workbook. And now Power Query will tell me all the elements that it can find in that file that we first created. If we had tables or named ranges, we would see them here. In this case, we only have sheet one. Okay, so let's select that. Let's say transform data. And as expected, we see that Power Query guessed the range correctly. I'll uh, delete these last two steps here and let's stick with just the source step where we indicate the path to the data source and the navigation where we indicate that we want one sheet named sheet one and that's where the data that we want to import is. Okay, so let's go close and load to uh, a table in an existing worksheet, maybe this one, it's fine, and let's uh, stay here. So imagine that a user comes to this data source file and decides to add a certain note here, a random note, uh, about something that uh, he doesn't want to uh, forget about. Okay, uh, even change the color, and let's do save. The next time we refresh this, this query, uh, so here data refresh, we see that now Power Query is bringing all the data up to that last cell that we used. Okay, so we don't want that, so we go to the data source and we delete the text that we have there. Let's save. And now let's refresh and we see that Although the text is not coming, Power Query is still considering all the cells up to E11. Okay, so what is it there that is making Power Query consider to bring the data from that cell? What I was telling in that previous video is that we should go and clear all 
and I was thinking of deleting all the contents and the formattings from this cell. So I came here and said, okay, let's do clear all to make sure that we uh, clean everything. In fact, I was recommending to go like this, select all the columns outside of the range that we want and then come to uh, clear all. Clear everything from those rows and columns, okay? And save. And now if we come here and do a refresh all, now we get the range that we are interested in looking into the information and bring the data into this external file. What Alex told me is that certain things are not reset just by using clear all. And one of the things that he mentioned was that if I come here to any cell, let's say E11 again, and I change the row height. Now, if I come here and do refresh all, something is making Power Query now look into more rows. It's interesting because I came to D11, but I really didn't do anything in that cell. What I did was to alter the uh, row height. So, okay, um, Power Query is saying, oh, uh, there's data in this range and something about this row changed. So now the range was extended up to row and in fact, not really just row 11, but row 12 as well for some reason. And if we now try to, if we do clear all, of course it won't work because clear all it's here. Of course, there's nothing there to clear. So if we do refresh, nothing happens. And if we try to reset that uh, row height to what it was before, uh, so 14, 24 pixels, 13.2, 22 pixels. And we could do even using VBA or something to, uh, or out of it maybe to reset uh, the row height and see if that works. But according to Alex, nothing of these will work. So he tried a few things to uh, make rows go back to default height and let's say save again. Let's try again. Oh, now with out of it, it worked. That's interesting. Anyways, so what is recommended in these situations where we really want to make sure that we remove everything from certain cells, certain columns and certain rows is to select all the rows and go and delete those rows. Select all the columns that we don't want to bring in, right click and delete, and this should eliminate everything from the range that we do not want to bring. So it's working correctly now. Just one last note, as I was referring at the beginning, if we transform this uh, to a table, so control T or insert table. And now if we create, let's save and let's put a note here outside the table. When we use Power Query to connect to the sheet, so let's do another query from file get data from file from that same file. Now we will be able to see the table here. So if I point to the table instead of the sheet, then we won't have any problems with any data outside that range because now the range is well defined. We are telling Power Query, just bring what's in the table. Okay. So if you go transform data and 
we look at what Power Query is bringing, then we have exactly what we wanted. That's why it's so much better to connect to tables when we have the opportunity to really choose, just pick tables instead of sheet. Okay, so that's what I was going to tell you about today. There's uh, this video uh, by Bill Jelen that coincidentally he also published just a few days ago where he uses the same strategy of deleting rows and columns to remove any extra information that might be in there that we don't really need and in this case it was to solve another problem not related to power query and so what's important to note here is that the last cell in a sheet may affect uh, different processes and we need to be mindful of that okay so i hope you liked uh, this video i hope it was useful if you have any comments any suggestions just let me know and i'll see you soon have a good day bye now